Hello, I'm Renata with Renata's Garden and welcome to another episode of Unearth Horticulture. Today's topic is all about our native prairie wildflowers. I'm out here planting some cut flower varieties that we'll be able to enjoy this summer, but I also thought this is the perfect opportunity today to talk to you about the benefits of planting natives in your yard. The prairie is just exploding right now. It's exploding full of June meadow flowers and it's gonna be knee deep, hip deep here as the season continues, but I've got a few natives that we're gonna hone in on and take closer looks at. This is our native mimosa plant and it's pretty thorny. You can see along here, it's related to we have a lot of plants in the bean family here in our prairies and the legume family. And this is relate, this is in that family. It's also called cat briar sensitive plant because the leaves actually fold up when they're touched, which is really cool. These leaves are already folded up. They're protecting itself. It's a, it's a wind reaction to protect the, the plant from losing too much water from its leaves, which is really fascinating. I spotted here some fleabane, and you'll notice that a lot of our native prairie flowers sound kind of medicinal, and that's because they were used medicinally oftentimes by uh, Native Americans and early settlers. Um, you have to really know what you're doing when you're foraging if you're gonna use, uh, med use these natives for medicinal remedies, but fleabane is one of my favorites. It was one of those that I picked as a little girl and always had to include in my bouquets that I brought in <laughs> to the house and caused some major allergy issues for my family. <laughs> so as I walk along here looking for wildflowers to identify for you, I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about why you should plant natives in your yard. First of all, it's always best to grow what, what works well in your climate. And these plants have lived here since before we've lived here and of course, we should grow them and be successful with them. Um, they also support our local ecosystem. They support our honeybees. They support um, our wildlife here. And so planting pollinator plants and things that are native to Kansas in your yards is a really beneficial way to support those pollinators and local wildlife and insects. Let's see, Dash and I have spotted something here to take a look at. I'll try not to get my shadow in it. This is a lead plant. And lead plant kind of has this velvety, white fuzzy leaf. And the backs are much more white than the tops. Especially you can see it on the new growth here. Lead plant is a cool plant because it actually signifies that you have really healthy ground, healthy soil, uh, healthy land. So it's an important one to see pop up in your grassland. So as I sit here kind of observing different plant life and wildlife out here in the prairie, the birds, I have this constant humming sound around me because I have some honeybees hard at work harvesting pollen from flowers. Honeybees actually are state insect, which I think is an awesome state insect to have. Uh, I have a couple of hives on the on the property and they're always hard at work and I love uh, working amongst the bees in the garden and out in the prairie and in the greenhouse because there's this kind of sense of uh, balance and natural peace about it. So uh, we're lucky to have some docile hives and I don't think I've ever been stung by a honeybee. So yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Okay, so I've spotted a couple more um, these haven't bloomed yet, but they're nice and leggy here and they really stick out in the prairie. Um, this is clover, wild clover, and it's really nutritious for, for animals to graze. And this part of the prairie on our property is not grazed by cattle. So they usually graze it down first. And so that's one thing that ranchers and farmers keep in mind is not to overgraze prairie to eliminate some of this more nutritious, uh, nutritious uh, plant life for their animals. But um, because this part of the prairie isn't grazed, except for by my two German shepherds here, which take the occasional munch, um, we have a lot of this 
prairie clover sticking around. Oh, I've spotted some of the first Rudbeckia, Black-Eyed Susan coming up in the prairie. They're really pretty and they add that nice contrasting bright color with the yellows and purples in, in June and throughout the rest of the summer. We have a lot of this prairie larkspur popping up. Oop, I'm sorry, honeybee. We have a lot of this prairie larkspur popping up randomly throughout the prairie. They don't grow as much in clumps as other types of plant life does. They kind of spike up and they run solo, um, but they're really pretty. They're really fun to press and uh, they're really important to our pollinators. Uh, here's something that I have very fond memories of. This is yarrow or yarrow, depending on how you want to say it. But it has really cute little florets on it. It has these uh, really pretty fine feather-like leaves. And yarrow grows throughout our prairie. It's white, but in the garden center you can find it in lots of different colors now. It's definitely very hardy. It's got a nice taproot system and uh, has a unique smell. Whoa, Dash. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah, it has a beautiful, uh, beautiful appearance to it and the smell is a little bit musty. Um, you'll know what I mean if you've smelled it before, so go find it and look for it. And something coming up here and it's a milkweed, a type of milkweed. In our part of the prairie we have over 30 species of milkweed out there. And this is, uh, there's a couple of species that look similar to this. It's commonly known as spider milkweed. and. Uh, milkweed, as you know, or may know, is very important for monarch butterflies to feed on because it's the only thing their uh, caterpillars feed on. So really important to support, support that kind of that part of our ecosystem in Kansas. See, we have some wild parsley here. Ooh, my shadow's getting in the way. Wild parsley is really, really a pretty bright yellow colored umble fluorescences uh, throughout the prairie. So there you have it. That has been your brief walkthrough tour of the natives in our prairie right now, the June, June wildflowers. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, it's really important to have these in your yards to support our Kansas ecosystem, but also it's important to just be successful. So um, stay tuned. Renata's garden is gonna get more and more into native plants and i hope you enjoyed this episode of unearth horticulture if you have questions about wildflowers that you see around or you're looking for perennials to plant in your yard i'm sure i can direct you in the right direction so yeah thanks for tuning in stay tuned for next week's episode until next time you've been watching unearth horticulture <laughs>